Good evening and welcome to our Supporting Students of the Year 12 evening. Um, lovely to have so many of you here. Um, I'm hoping that people can hear and, hear and see me okay. Um, I have put into the chat box, um, hopefully you can see that, that if you do have any questions at the end of the presentation, to post them here. But could some lovely person please just let me know in the chat that I am coming through loud and clear before we get started. As we're just coming up to six o'clock and it would be good to get started promptly. Thank you, Mandy Hudson. Excellent. Right. I'm going to put the chat out of the way so it doesn't distract me too much while we are going through the presentation. Um, the plan from my point of view would be to run through some information um, and guidance really aimed at supporting um, our year 12 students through their time in sixth form. Conscious that for some of you, that's a journey that you've been through with older children. For some of you, you're very new to perhaps the sixth form experience, but familiar with Harlington. And for some of you, brand new to Harlington and the sixth form experience. So some of the information that we'll go through is really covering what I in the sixth form team have been um, talking to the students about through induction and as they've started here with us in September. But as I say, if there are questions that people have through the presentation, which I hope to keep down to about half an hour and then about 15 minutes um, to have a look at questions that are posted in the chat at the end. If there are questions that I'm not able to get through, um, then obviously I will have those recorded and will make contact. Or again, if you have questions that you would prefer to ask um, more privately, then in the presentation, there is plenty of opportunity to see um, how to get in touch by email, et cetera. Okay, so let's get into the presentation. I hope that you can see the screen that I'm sharing with you. Um, I'll just pull down, pull up the chat just in case anyone's telling me that we have any issues. Okay, I think we're okay. Right. So, first of all, I would imagine there are some students sitting out there. Um, first of all, big well done, as I said to the students in the first assembly we had for getting their grades and getting into sixth form. And they genuinely have done a genuinely have done a really good job settling in for the first couple of weeks. I think we're coming up nearly three weeks now. Um, but as a whole, we're very proud with how they've got on. Um, and I hope that this information tonight helps to back up what the students have heard, but also give parents and carers a really clear sort of idea about the journey through sixth form um, and support that's in place from school and support that um, can be offered at home. So to outline what I want to do, just to introduce the sixth form team, talk about academic and pastoral things, look at opportunities within the sixth form and the future going forward post um, sixth form. So the sixth form team consists of myself as head of year 12 um, and my line manager is Mr Southall, he's deputy head teacher with, with responsibility for key stage five in school. Um, so currently, as I say, I'm head of year 12, Mr Smith is head of year 13 and we work on a, on a rolling programme so that when Mr Smith sees his year 13s off to university next summer, he will pick up the new year 12s coming in and I will take my year 12s through into year 13. Mrs Brandon, massively important person in, in the sixth form, she's the easiest person probably to contact, whether that's on the phone or via email, she works very hard in the sixth form office um, supporting the sixth form team and certainly supporting the students massively throughout their time in sixth form. Um, as I said, just in terms of contact details, I think the first thing I will talk about is the importance of keeping up, um, you know, regular communication and the lines to do that. So our emails are pretty straightforward, just our initial and surname at harlington.org. Um, general enquiries to the sixth form, sixth form at harlington.org. And then if it is to um, report in about student absence or um, planned absence or absence on the day, then six form absence at Harlington would be the email to use. We also um, really encourage um, students and parents to use various forms of 
um, communication to find that information. Students, we very much encourage to use their school student Gmail accounts because that's where we will put our information to them, particularly about opportunities and important information about things coming up. Um, the sixth form website, some of that I would agree, possibly needs a slight update, but most information is relevant and up to date. And on there, we will be posting, for example, recordings of sessions like this um, and other support materials on there. There's also lots of information about the courses that the students are studying. So that's a good point of call if you've got questions about the sorts of um, assessments that students are doing, etc. Um, you may receive messages via group call um, sometimes. Um, that is about notification of events, opportunities, and other important information. And then how this was communicated in the in the weekly bulletin that comes out. So as I say, please encourage. Um, students to use their school Gmail and um, that's how we will communicate with them um, if we're not obviously speaking to them in assemblies or in form time etc and they will miss out on opportunities um, and key information if they're not doing that. So um, this is something that I've spoke to the students about um, particularly when they joined us for the induction at the start of September when they came in on the Friday once they've chosen that they wanted to come to Harlington, to get them just reflecting and thinking, what, why are they attending Harlington? What do they want to achieve out of that? What do they think they need to do to achieve that? And how are they gonna do it? And do they think they need any support along the way? And those are the sorts of questions that it would be useful to have with, with your children to see, have they got realistic ideas about what, why they're here, what they want to achieve, and that might help guide you a little bit in terms of where you might need to speak to us about support along the way. Um, OK, so in terms of um, academic side of things, so how is sixth form different to year 11? Um, students are on the whole only studying now three subjects. We do have some studying four, if that's um, further maths or perhaps core maths, but three a level or level three BTECs. For each of those, they will have nine hours per subject, often split between generally two teachers, perhaps. Um, so that means on their timetable, they will have non contact time, in other words, non timetabled lessons um, that are study periods. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in a moment um, and the importance of those and encouraging students to use those as productively as possible. Certainly, something that we have been doing with them in assemblies and in sixth form studies. There will be more independent work to do. We need to encourage the students to be far more independent learners than perhaps they have been at GCSE um, with an expectation that there is gonna be more work. And if they are missing work, if they're not in school for any reason, that there will be an expectation that they're catching up with that. Um, Teacher-student relationships, I hope, hope um, the students are finding that the way in which they interact with their teachers does change to some extent in sixth form um, and the conversations that they're having with teachers we would encourage to ensure that they're getting as much support and feedback as they possibly can um, i know that might come as a strange feeling having probably not at times wanted to talk to their teachers as much in year 11 and um, certainly now we massively encourage that as a real important support route for the students um, i've spoke to students in my sixth form studies group just recently, you know, how are they, how are they finding it? What, what was the difference between GCSEs and A-levels? And genuinely, they are kind of acknowledging that there is a large jump, um, a little bit of a shock, um, but as long as they're speaking to their teachers and they're getting the advice, then hopefully with support along the way, they will make that jump um, and not fall and, and struggle. Um, students will, be having what we call ALPS targets. We'll talk about those in a moment. Um, and that's how we will monitor how the students are getting on, ensure that if they're not progressing as we would hope they would be, that appropriate intervention can be put in place, support through departments and contact made with home to ensure that home students and school are all talking together to make sure students are getting the best out of their time academically. Um, students have six-form studies on their timetable, which we'll mention in a moment. 
um, sixth form facilities. Obviously, they have areas within the school that are specifically for the sixth form students, um, whether that's for studying, whether it's their cafe facilities, just the areas where the other students in school aren't allowed to visit, um, specifically for the sixth formers, where they can use things like their phones and their headphones, as long as they're not doing that in the other parts of the school. They will find an increased level of responsibility. And as we go through the possibility to take on roles of responsibility, we very much encourage them to do so. Um, we want them to be role models for the school students in, in the main school to look up to our sixth form students and aspire to be in the sixth form. But along with that comes some level of expectations in terms of the way they behave around the school. Um, they will have a new tutor. In some cases, they've actually got a tutor that if they're um, studied GCSEs at Harlington, they may have um, their same tutor, some of them, but many of them will have a new tutor who's now a dedicated sixth form tutor, which who will see them through their journey through year 12 and 13. Um, there is different uniforms, so sixth form dress code, which is different. Um, opportunities for volunteering, which we've just been speaking to them about in their last assembly, joining councils. Very high expectations. Yes, we talked about behaviour, but in students challenging themselves to do their very best academically. And the fact that they're starting a different journey in education now, a two year journey through sixth form, at the end of which we very much hope they go out into the big wide world, um, whether that's to continue studying at university, studying and working in apprenticeship, taking a gap year, et cetera. And hopefully, some of the information that I share with you will just show you how we plan to support the students as we have done um, for many years to ensure that they come out with the results they need to go on to do what they want to do, having had lots of input along the way to help them make those, those decisions. Um, we talked about the six from timetable, um, the fact that on that they have times when they are not directly with um, a member of staff having a timetabled lesson. Um, some of those on their timetable, if, if they've shared their timetable with you and they've showed you what they're doing, um, will be directed study. And if you see the letters SSA, that indicates that it is in a sixth form study area. So we're suggesting you use that time on your timetable to do work for that particular subject, um, whether that is consolidating notes from the lesson, further reading, working on assessments or homeworks that you've been set for that particular subject. Some of them are just titled guided learning. Again, SSA indicates that it's in a six form study area, not in a taught classroom. Um, these are the ones that students sometimes refer to as freeze, but particularly we encourage students to be making positive, sensible use of that time, productive use of it. And we as teachers and sixth form staff very much encourage them and try and guide them to do that. Initially, they may say they've not got an awful lot to do, um, but very soon they'll find they've got a lot to do. And if they manage their time carefully using that time in school, it should, and this is, you know, the perk that we try and explain is that it should mean less time spent once you leave the school site, having to put in lots and lots of hours outside of school. There will be hours outside of school that they need to put in to keep up to date with their studies and to do really well. But if they use their time in school, then they will be making the best use of their time. Six form studies is an important programme that the students have, and they have it once per cycle now on their timetable for one hour um, with the dedicated six form studies teacher, um, generally in workshops. Um, and we've started looking at all sorts of things to do with study skills, time management, prioritisation, organisation and so on. And as we go through, that will change and start to look at things like well-being, mental health, look at issues that affect students of their particular age to do with um, drugs, alcohol, um, relationships, we'll look at first aid, um, all sorts of things which are relevant at a particular point to students going through that sixth form journey. Um, in terms of a timeline kind of, of when things are going to happen academically, really, we're getting to the end of September now. So we've spoken to students in assembly last week, really saying their decisions about their courses kind of need to be firmed up. If there were any students that were having last minute worries that they're on the wrong courses, they really needed to speak to us. And a few have done that. Changes have been made kind of this week, but pretty much end, end of 
end of September is, is where we're looking at. We don't want students then thinking they need to change because there will be a lot of lessons and a lot of content behind if they move to another course. Um, students will have assessments towards the end of September and the start of October, which will inform us as teachers and me as head of year 12, um, how students have made a start on each of their courses and where we've possibly got um, maybe to have some conversations, look at possible intervention and support early on. Um, if students are really, really struggling with what they're doing, that would generally be from a subject point of view, if it's in one subject, if it was across the board, then it might be a more team effort um, with myself involved, um, speaking to you guys at home and the students looking at ways that we can work with the students to make sure that they're getting on better in the next set of assessments, which would be in November. Um, reports would be issued in December, more assessments in January, and then again, a reporting cycle in March. Um, March is kind of important because that's when we have our year 12 curriculum parents evening. Um, there is a year 13 one this side of Christmas, which if we do have concerns, as I said, after this initial period of assessment, um, we may invite certain students in just to have a discussion about how they're getting on and what we can do and um, work to support them. Um, something else that happens in March is the higher education evening. Um, because there isn't really scope in tonight's session to get into detail really about um, next steps and university applications, apprenticeships and so on. Although I will mention that um, because students will need to start thinking about that um, pretty, pretty much from this point on. You know, a lot of decisions that might be made along the way, um, we need to start thinking about early. But in terms of the actual process of applications for university, apprenticeships and so on really kicks in at the start of March um, and we will organise visits to um, UCAS exhibitions, apprenticeship shows etc for the students but that higher education evening is very much again like this information for, for parents and students to make sure you're as clued up as possible particularly if that's something that you are new to and we generally always try and get um, a representative from a university who works in admissions um, or just general information from, from the universities about um, not just applying to university, but what options there are for students out there after, after their A-levels and level three BTECs. Um, and the year 12 exams will take place um, towards the end of May. And then those report, those of the grades will be reported in June. As I mentioned briefly, students will have um, ALPS targets which is you know, common amongst many, many sixth forms. Um, and they are challenging targets that if it's a, what we would call a minimum expected grade. So teachers will be measured against this, departments will be measured against it. And it's what we very much want our students to work towards and hope that they can exceed these grades. And if they exceed the grade that is their ALPS target, they will be working within the top 25% of students in the country. So this is based on benchmark data from students um, from the Department of Education national data. So it's not targets that we set internally. These are targets that will be set um, and they will be discussed at quite, in quite some detail with the students as we go forward. So as I say, they are challenging and that's really our kind of Ethos is that we want students to challenge themselves to work hard to really excel in their subjects. Alongside that, we know that there are going to be struggles along the way, and that's why we're here talking about how to support students as best we can as they go through. So I often talk to the students about my experiences of A levels, which is an awful long time ago now, but just say that I can I can put myself in, in their shoes and would agree, or I would certainly say that studying A-levels was probably the hardest two years in my academic experience. I think training to be a teacher probably topped that, but A-levels were certainly more challenging for many reasons than perhaps time at university and so on. Um, and that comes down to, I suppose, these bits at the bottom, really, that um, they're balancing a lot of things in their lives. 
Um, turning 17 and 18, the newfound freedoms, balancing that with part-time work, added independence, the fact they're going to start perhaps driving, taking driving lessons, tests, which gives them more freedom, etc. So a lot of that is something that we, we know students have to balance things and make a careful balance. And we talk to them about, you know, making sure that we've got their priorities right. Um, but just the fact that it is very intense two years, even though they're doing just three subjects now, there is an awful lot to do. Um, students often, you know, reflect on their GCSE results. Obviously, again, this year, we've got students who didn't actually sit real GCSE exams. So they have mixed feelings about how, how they feel about the grades that they got. A lot of students I speak to are very pleased and they should be with how they've got on. A few a little bit disappointed. Um, when we mention university, a lot of students say, oh, I don't know, it's, you know, it's two years away, do I need to be thinking about it now? Um, oh, am I, am I doing the correct courses? So we've talked to students to try and get everyone, you know, happy with what they're doing. Um, they come back after having a long break. I know we had quite a lot of our students in for an extended induction period, but it's still a big break from the routine of school. So getting back into that is a bit of a challenge. And, and we're looking at them as the senior students in the school. So they are you know, responding to those challenges. And I would say as a year 12 group, having started three, just over three weeks ago, that they're doing a really good job on that. Um, this is again, something that we share with the students that quite often at the start of sixth form, hopefully they come in with, with a relatively high degree of confidence. They've chosen subjects that they feel that they've want to do, they feel that they've done well in, um, and they're ready to go out there and really, really do well in that subject. What we often find is that when they have their first period of assessments, they hand in their first essay and get feedback on it, um, they might not get a grade back that's as high as they would hope. And they might start to panic a little bit and they're feeling they've gone from being really confident down to a bit of a dip. What I would say and we say to the students and we would hope that you would encourage them with this is that just reassure them that's perfectly normal and that we will go through periods of confidence, we'll go through periods of, you know, am I good enough to do well in this subject? But hopefully we, what we generally see is that students make that progress over the two years so that when they're approaching their final exams, they may have gone through periods like this, but they're, they're taken on board all the advice and support from teachers so that they can do their very best. Um, as I say, students have targets and we track how they're getting on through the assessments. I, as head of year 12, talk to the key stage five leaders um, about how students are getting on in their subjects. And we talk about perhaps suitable intervention for students that are struggling in particular um, in that particular subject and what we can do and that will be communicated home to ensure that everybody's in the loop on that and if necessary that might involve just coming into school for a meeting so everyone's on the same page and know how students um, can get the best support if it's just they're not talking to their teachers or not handing things in on time they're not spending enough time on their work those sorts of things that we can just help give a bit of a kind of positive boost on and get students working better because it is it is a challenge and we very much appreciate that. And then making sure that as we go forward with the future um, assessments and data collection points that students are starting to make progress towards those target grades. Um, but also to say that students may be working at their target grades and exceeding them. And we need to make sure that we're you know, praising and, and acknowledging students that are doing really, really well at the same time as supporting those that are finding things a bit more of a struggle. Um, just wanted to share a couple of things that I spoke to students about that we very much appreciate parental support with. Um, obviously, one of those is attendance. So trying to make medical appointments outside of school hours. I, I know it's really awkward ringing up doctors and trying to get medical appointments. Um, so we do appreciate that. But if possible, if that can be outside of school time, because students really, really need to be in in their lessons, having that expertise from their teachers. And they need to register promptly in the morning. So that is at half past eight in their form room. So they should be in there at half past eight to register. Um, if they are late for some reason, um, 
transport related issues, etc. They need to sign in at the sixth form office with Mrs. Bandon. Um, not that booking holidays is on high on many people's agendas at the moment, sadly. Um, obviously try and avoid where we can holidays in um, term time. Uh, if a teacher is absent, students won't have a, a standing teacher for their lesson, but the teachers will set work. So they need to sign up in the six on common room um, and the teachers will have set them work if the teacher is going to be absent. Um, really important just method of communication that we know students will, will, will have days or times when they're not available to be in school for all sorts of different reasons. Um, if so, and it's a planned absence, we encourage students to get a green form, which I don't know if you can see me, but looks like this. Um, from the sixth form balcony um, and that allows them to inform us of a planned absence and their teachers um, and that's the best way that we can keep a handle on knowing why people may or may not be in school and to make sure they know that they've got to catch up with any work that they are missing um, and as I mentioned earlier in terms of other absences um, can ring through to sixth form email on sixth form absence or a letter um, I've spoken to students about a dress code and having had year 12 assembly this morning, I could be really proud really, generally everyone in the year group was, was dressed appropriately. Um, the one thing which I know students are badgering me about and I understand their frustration is on lanyards. Um, due to the rebranding, we are awaiting the newly branded lanyards, but the process was started, well, the lanyards are ordered, but the process of the students this morning have had their um, photographs taken to go on their ID badges, which will go into their lanyard card holder. And going forward, that will allow them to be able to um, leave and come back onto the school site at break and lunchtime, which I know they're kind of chomping at the bit to get onto that with that added um, responsibility, but privilege that that gives them. Um, so that is something that is very much in, in progress. I know they're getting a little bit, when are we getting our lanyards? Um, I'm very hopeful that it will be very, very soon. Just the things that we would ask students to avoid in terms of their uniform. We don't want students wearing trainers. Um, the overall dress code for sixth form is that they are, you know, in smart, casual business attire. So we don't want jeans or joggers. They should be wearing trousers. They should be wearing shoes, not trainers. So we don't want denim. They can wear jumpers, but it shouldn't have large branding or, sl or slogans on and piercings is pretty much the same as in in the main school in terms of we should really only have piercings in in ears and not facial piercings so i'm going to speed through some of these bits because i've probably mentioned most most of these things already um, but this presentation will be available if you wanted to go back and have a look i think we've probably spoken about most things on that slide there um, we spoke about sixth form studies um, and tutor time. This just gives you some of the ideas of some of the topics that we're looking at early on in, in sixth form. Um, back in induction, they did an activity about developing a growth mindset, which saw them making origami penguins. Um, firstly, with no instructions, seeing whether they just gave up. Um, and a lot of students I spoke to remember, remember doing that and, and have come hopefully prepared to really challenge themselves, even when things get hard that they're going to keep working, they're going to seek advice and they're going to be successful. Um, they may start to say these sorts of things at home. They certainly start to say these things to us. Um, so what can we do? So too much work, too little time. So obviously some help with time management would be useful. I'm sure that many parents out there have, have jobs where that is very, very important. So it might be something that you can help the students with. We certainly aim to help them with that during form time and sixth form study sessions. Their lack of motivation, it might be that they don't really know what they want to achieve out of their time in sixth form. And it might be that that takes a little bit of time to get to. Have the students got an aim or a goal? What's, what's their, you know, what are they aiming to do with the subjects that they're doing? I'm not sure that all students do know, and certainly even into year 13, some may not know, but starting those conversations, thinking about what they want to achieve is really important. And if they do have 
and aim or a goal. It really does help them to be focused and motivated even when things are getting tough. If they're finding six one too difficult, most important is that they speak to somebody, speak to you guys at home, speak to us at school, and we will look to ways to resolve, resolve issues that they're having. Failing to meet deadlines, again, a lot of the things that we will do early on is talking about planning, prioritising, but also the importance of deadlines, particularly thinking about students going off into the world of work or university. Deadlines aren't just something that's a little bit flexible. They are a deadline for a reason and we want our students to be clear on that and working towards getting that right from the word go. Um, sometimes we hear things from students or in fact parents um, that just maybe a quick bit of clarification would help. So year 12 students do not have home study, that, that is correct, oh, sorry, but they don't have home study. Year 13 students, if they don't have a um, timetabled lesson, are able to go off site and study. In year 12, we need to develop certain levels of responsibility. We need to know that students are on track on their courses, which will only come through looking at their assessments and tracking how they're doing. So in year 12, students are expected to be on school site for all of their lessons through, um, through the day, study periods included. Um, we do monitor attendance closely because we know how important it is to be successful to be in school as much as possible. Um, we do want you as parents to come to the parents' evenings. In sixth form, sometimes try and tell their parents that it's not important anymore. Um, teachers will still email and contact parents regarding how students are getting on, on in lessons. Um, it might be that it's a bit of a nag about things that aren't quite going right, but that's generally in a supportive way hoping to get things on the right track as soon as possible. And if sixth form teachers are absent for lessons, which happens, illness, courses, et cetera, students will be set work to get on with, um, whether that's in the sixth form study areas um, or in the classroom where they would have the lesson. Um, if they do need to get on work when they're not in study, when they're not in those timetabled lessons, um, they have plenty of areas to study in. I speak to them quite regularly about making sure if they do have a study period that they get settled in one of their areas in the common room, in the library, in the IT room, in the study room next to my office as quickly as possible, settled down quietly on getting with some um, positive, productive studying. If they're not sure what to do, speak to their teachers. The teachers will make sure they've got plenty to do and plenty of guidance on what is most useful to be doing at these early stages. We mentioned about deadlines, we mentioned about attendance, we mentioned about study periods not being free periods, um, and that our sixth form ethos um, in terms of students really challenging themselves to be academically successful, but also involved with the life of the sixth form and the wider life of the school. Um, this is something that we've shared with the students um, in induction that they might look around and see, see people in their classes, people in their form, their friends, looking like it's just all going very easily. But as we'd all agree, that's only happening because people are possibly finding things difficult, failing, having disappointment, but putting in hard work, being disciplined, dedicated, and being persistent, that's what leads students to success. So we talk to students quite a lot about this, as well as being resilient, both emotionally, in terms of having energy, in terms of their, you know, sleeping enough, eating correctly, um, not spending all their time on their phones, on social media, building healthy relationships. And that includes, you know, with their new teaching staff to make sure they've got that line of support there. Keeping perspective when things feel like it's getting out of control or everything's too much. Um, and prioritising, making sure they're prioritising what's important to make sure they do the very best they can um, through sixth form. Again, this is stuff that we cover in sixth form studies and in form time, but just talking to students about being resilient is really important. So just probably covered most of these things, um, encouraging students to become independent learners. Um, as parents and carers, you still talk to them about you know, what homework have they got to do? Are they on top of things? What are they doing in their study sessions? Are they using them wisely? They'll probably say, we haven't got enough work to do, so therefore I don't know what to do. Speak to, speak to their teachers if you're worried 
email their teachers, see what they could be doing in that time. Are they organised with their timetable? Have they got all the equipment they need? And as I said, the two years are really difficult. Yes, academically, but also with this work-life balance, social life, social media, part-time work, getting the right balance of eating and sleeping. And really important that students' well-being is massively significant in terms of them being successful in their time in sixth form. Talk to students about the courses that they're doing and if they're not sure and you're not sure about what the structure is, is it 100% examined? Is the coursework involved? When are the assessment points? Um, when are their exams? What should they be revising? Again, this should all really come via their subject teachers and pretty much they should have this information right from the word go. But talk to them about it and if they're not sure, subject teachers will be the first point of contact. Um, and what are they planning on doing? after sixth form. I know it's really early to be thinking about that, but that's kind of why they're here, is this is opening the doors to what they want to do next, whether that's university, apprenticeships, gap years, etc. Um, if students do want to have some careers guidance, they're more than welcome to book one-to-one -one career sessions with Miss Proto. Um, they do that in the library. There's a booking system in the library. And um, if they've got any questions, they can ask their tutors or myself and we will get that organised. This is very significant um, for some students who may have been eligible for free school meals. They may be a carer and they may have a medical condition that affects their studies. Um, it isn't automatic that they will receive um, additional financial support at sixth form, but there is um, a bursary fund available for which they need to apply. So we've spoken to students about this in the application and letters are with Mrs. Brandon in the sixth form office. So if people do have any questions about that or basically if, if you think that the students will be eligible or there's a chance, then please let them come and get the um, application forms. That application needs to be done fairly promptly now and, and the first payment of the bursary fund is around October. Very much encourage students always to get involved with things other than just what's going on in their lessons, looking towards potential student leadership um, positions. I've spoken to students and I have really pleased to see about 50 so students have signed up to become peer mentors going forward. Got about 30 students signed up that want to help out our upcoming open evenings and parent evenings. Um, there are lots of opportunities for students in the system outside of their lessons, which will come on board as we go through. And I would always encourage students to get involved with those, not just the cliched kind of it's something good to put on your personal statement, but students generally get a lot more out of their six form experience and are happier here if they're getting involved with things that are going on. So that's an ongoing thing for me that I will encourage them to be doing. Um, but big thank you to those that have signed up to be peer mentors and so on. So this is the bit I'm going to go really quickly, because as I said, the bit about higher education, universities, um, apprenticeships and so on really kicks off properly in March with the higher education evening. Um, but I would say if you want to start researching, although UCAS is obviously the way students apply to university, it's also a really good first point of call for any information about options available to students after they've done their A-levels or level three BTECs in terms of university apprenticeships, gap years, employment. There's a lot of really relevant and useful information on there. So that would be one recommendation. Our students have I've had an absolute privilege and pleasure over the last, well, several years, but certainly the last two years thinking about all the hundreds easily over 100 each year applications to university ranging as you can see there huge range of courses medicine veterinary law um, subject based courses from archaeology through to zoology all over all over the length and breadth of the uk and abroad so students um, are going off doing what they want to do whether that's at university or going into apprenticeships there's a few name there that students have gone off to relatively recently an ever-growing number of students going off to do some fantastic apprenticeships um, but also considering gap years going into the RAF police pilot training etc etc so we do have a very um, sort of a, a good program in place to support students with their next steps um, which starts through six-form studies and form time 
any students that are considering Oxbridge, so Oxford or Cambridge, or competitive applications for medicine, veterinary medicine, dentistry, um, they will be picked up very early in terms of um, candidates that are suitable, but also candidates that are looking at that um, because the applications for those will be slightly earlier than um, other UCAS applications. Um, and as I say, they will be supported with that and any of the additional admissions tests for any of those things. Um, similarly with apprenticeships, plenty of support in place, visits the apprenticeship show. And we have students that have gone off and gone to do apprenticeships come back and talk to the students about their experiences of applying for those. Right, I realise that I've done a normal Mr Elms and gone over my, my own allocated time slot of, of going through the presentation. Um, so I will come out of the presentation. Stop sharing, there we go. And I will go to the chat, which I think I can see. So um, I hope that the information that I've gone through has been useful. Um, and as I say, I do have some time now, a few, a few minutes to try and answer um, any questions that people might have. Um, as I say, it might be that you have direct questions which would be uh, more applicable via an email directly to me, um, but Oh, I do apologise if people were left in the lobby. I will send out an email with the link to the presentation. Um, just difficult once you start to always get everybody in. Right, let's see. Independent study, year 12 gain privileges and then land offsite for independent study. Some students would be much better, more productive and can't quite. Okay, so that is a really good question. Um, so as I said, that is something that will come with time. What we need to make sure is that students are well into the routines of studying. We know that they're being um, successful on their courses. There aren't any causes for concern. Um, and then that will start to be considered. So it's not something that in year 12 is normally considered, certainly this side of Christmas. Um, they will have the opportunity to go off site at break and lunch time which again is a privilege that comes with some responsibility. Um, but in terms of them being granted home study, it really does de depend on, on how things are going by individual students, but it's certainly something that we wouldn't be considering for the first, you know, first term, sort of term and a half at least of, of year 12. Um, okay, concern about possible uniform change. Good question. Um, I will be undertaking um, a uniform review um, with sixth form students um, and that's sort of commencing over the next couple of weeks. Um, that's just to review our current uniform or uni sorry sixth form dress code um, to gain insight from students, um, from parents, from staff, all, all, all involved parties really. Are what we're doing is, is what we're doing currently, you know, what we want to do? Do we want to change radically? Do we want to change Things just to make it easier that when students are challenged it's clear about you know what's acceptable and what isn't um, but in terms of an update there won't be any uniform change for year 12 um, this year um, and there will be consultation about changes going forward in September but it's very early days and there certainly aren't any you know direct plans to be changing the six on dress code as it stands at the moment um, not enough space at lunchtime yeah um, so the plan with that is that as soon as the lanyards um, cards are sorted, um, both year 12 and 13 students will be able to go off site at lunchtime um, if they want to. So that typically frees up more space in the areas um, and we will review at that point. And if there is still not enough space for the students to be, we will look at another area that we can commandeer for sixth form use within, um, within the school. Um, bus passes, oh, there we go. Um, that is a good question. Um, I think, you know, every year at the very start of term, we do have issues with six formers and the issuing of bus passes. Um, we have been informed that they've started processing the bus passes, which 
some reason they decide they have to do the years 9, 10, 11 first to make sure this space is on the bus for those students. We've, we've never had an issue when we've got to that point. All our six forms have also then got a pass. I appreciate that it causes headaches and hassle at this first part of, of the year. Um, and we very much as a school from, you know, old heads, new heads have communicated with, with central beds about our frustrations and, and your frustrations as parents about that. Um, so I, I really appreciate where you're coming from and thank you if you know you've had to make alternative arrangements to get students into school during this period. Um, I, will, I will press for an update, um, but I, um, as far as I'm aware, they have started processing the six form passes um, and I, I hope that gets sorted out. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I've also spoken to the students about um, the potential of a freshers ball. Um, and it was interesting in induction, there was kind of mi mixed feelings about it, um, whether or not now students have, have, have joined um, and you know, they've seen their new year group, their feelings on that are slightly different. So as I've said to the students, what, what I plan to do is just to, again, once again, seek their kind of feedback on is there an appetite for a freshers ball? What sort of event would they be looking for? If it wasn't a freshers ball, is there something else they would like to do as a new year group to kind of, as a not you know a team building kind of welcome them into sixth form? Um, but just to say that you know going forward, they also need to remember and look forward. Well, very much hoping that they will also then have a year thirteen leavers ball, which was very successful for our year 13s this year. We're massively lucky to have squeezed it in. Literally, you know, COVID just about helped us out in terms of what the regulations were. Um, and we will, we will, it's already booked for the new, the year 13s this year to have their ball. And, and we will very much make sure that the year 12s going through into 13 have their end of sixth form ball. I appreciate what you're saying about, you know, trying to have some kind of event because they didn't get a year 11 one and we are, um, myself and Mr. Southall and Mrs. Brandon are very much working on that and just seeking what, what the students really want um, and getting something that, that is appropriate to their, their age, et cetera. Um, okay. If my son met the laptops in logging and not available for six months on a study period. Um, they should be. I will, I will find out about that. Okay. That is something that normally has always been the case. So... I wasn't aware. Um, please do just get students to come and ask me if there's problems like that, because I wasn't aware. Normally there is a case of laptops in the library um, and six formers can use them on study periods because you can't expect them all to have a laptop in school. Um, so hopefully we can get to the bottom of that one. Okay, I, I think it appears I've come to the end of these. Um, I hope, as I say, that, that's been useful. If if you guys do have have questions that you're thinking about, and I know I'm probably going to either get locked in school or chased out by the site agent um, in about the next five minutes. So if you do have questions that you think about after this, um, or there's something that you, you've heard that you think I just want a bit of clarification, then please, please do email me. Um, it would be, be a pleasure to get back to you on those. I, I will chase up about the laptops. I will have an ask about where we are with um, with bus passes, there's not anything I can do about it, but I can ask for an update. Um, and the freshers ball, yes, it's 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 in it's in the mix. We are going to try and get an event for these guys. Um, that they've had, or as of many of the students, a really difficult time, and to have something to look forward to, to to celebrate. That will be really important to us, um, and we hope to be able to put on some kind of event for them. Um, hopefully something that they all would, would really enjoy. Okay, so any, any more questions, if you want to um, pop those in an email to me, as I say, I, ho I hope what we've talked about has been useful and I really appreciate your support coming on the session this evening, um, but I am going to take my own advice and stop talking now um, and hopefully went my way home. So have a, have a good evening, everyone. Um, please do just pick up the phone or give me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can with any more queries going forward. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording there.